Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Speak a word. Speak a word of truth. Speak a word of power. Speak a word of trust. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. Amen. I remember the first time that Brian took me home to meet his parents. Linda and Al were lovely people. They welcomed me warmly, and they invited me to sit down and talk. And they asked me questions to get to know me. A lot of questions. <laughs> and I'll always remember the question that Linda asked me that took me by surprise because I'd never been asked it before. She asked me, what is your earliest memory? What is your earliest memory? How far back can you remember? Well, it took me a while to come up, come up with an answer. And I finally remembered, I had a memory when I was way back when I was four years old. And I was playing with my sisters on the next door neighbor's porch. And they had a mailbox attached to the, the wall. And it had those rungs on the bottom where you put the newspaper. You remember those mailboxes? You remember when we used to get a, mail, uh, a newspaper in the mail? Remember? <laughs> well, I thought it was a good idea. Or maybe, actually, I think my sister put me up to it. You know how we remember stories differently over the years. Well, anyway... I decided to go ahead and hang on this mailbox. And as you can imagine, it did not hold me. So I fell down and onto the concrete floor and split my chin open. So I remember the pain and the tears. And I remember sitting on my mother's lap as we drove to the hospital to get stitches. But what I remember most of all is how my mother assured me giving me words of assurance that it would be okay. And her words were the key in transforming my memory from one of trauma to trust. She sealed into my heart and mind that day that she would always be there and that she would give me love and comfort. So I came to realize in that moment that in her, I could trust. So what's your earliest memory? How far back can you remember? Do you remember what you had for breakfast this morning? Trick question. <laughs> Let's make it a little harder. Do you remember when the World Trade Center was hit by airplanes, reducing them to rubble and ashes? Do you remember when the World Wide Web made its debut, changing our world forever? Do you remember when Star Wars was first released in the theaters? Do you remember when the cell phone replaced the push-button phone, which replaced the rotary phone, which replaced the party line phone? Do you remember? Do you remember when there were separate restrooms and water fountains for blacks and whites? Do you remember when JFK was shot? Hmm. Do you remember when the television was invented and you had your first TV in your house? Hmm. Do you remember when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Do you remember the World Series when Babe Ruth stood up to the plate, pointed to the stands and hit a whopping home run? What's your earliest memory? How far back can you remember? Do you remember when Moses parted the waters of the Red Sea? Of course not. None of us were alive then. It happened in the 13th century BC. And yet, strangely, we feel like we were there, right? How is that possible? Well, thanks to Charlton Heston, and the iconic Ten Commandments movie when we saw that dramatic portrayal of Moses parting the sea. Or maybe a more recent animated version called The Prince of Egypt. Or maybe just being in church all these years, going to Sunday school and hearing the story told in words and in pictures, discussing the story in Bible study, and hearing the story preached about in sermon and sung about in hymns. 
You see, the people long, long ago told the story to their children. And they told the story to their grandchildren. And they told the story to their children and their grandchildren and on and on and on. And eventually the story was written down and was put into a book. And that book, the Bible, was passed down from generation to generation to generation. And that's how we know the story today. So what is the story of the Red Sea? Well, in doing a little research this week, I came upon an article written by Dennis Olson, who was an Old Testament professor of mine from Princeton, and I remember him well. And he reminded me of something, and maybe, maybe this is new to you, about the story of the Red Sea. And that is that the, the Red Sea story happens in Exodus chapters 14 and 15, but there are actually three different versions of the story. Imagine that. So that means that people remember the story differently through the ages, right? We know how that happens. So the earliest version has God portrayed as a cloud, a cloud that comes between God's people, the Israelites trying to escape from slavery, and the pursuing army of Pharaoh's Egyptians. And God becomes like a wind that blows the waters all night long. And a panic that comes on the Egyptians is what sends them into the sea to drown. Later, a priestly version is recorded. And that is that God commands Moses to raise his hand and to part the waters so that magically they become like two walls on either side. And there's dry ground in the middle of the sea so the Israelites can pass through safely to the other side. And the Egyptians, of course, pursue them. The army is trying to get them to come back to slavery. And then God commands Moses to put up his hand and his staff again, and the waters come down and cover the Egyptians. This story reminds us, this sto these two stories have come together over the years to form one story that has deep theological meaning. And that is that God is a God of power and possibility. That sometimes God will work through the natural world, the cloud and the wind that blows. Other times, God will work through extraordinary wonders, miracles even, parting the waters of the sea for God's purposes. God is a God of strength and salvation, intricately involved in the struggles of God's people, intervening on their behalf, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly, sometimes getting down and dirty against the evil forces of the world to bring about good and to save God's people. So this story reminds us that even though it seemed impossible for the Israelites to escape this army through this body of water, that nothing is impossible for God, and that God will go to any lengths. God will do anything to show the depth of God's love for God's people. So Exodus 15 is the third version of the story, and it comes to us as a song. So Moses and Miriam, they invite the people into a ritual of remembering. And they do this by way of a song, a song of celebration, a song of deliverance, a song of thanksgiving. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. O 
over and over again, Moses and Miriam call the people to sing. Why? So that they can remember the story of how God saved God's people. They can remember that God is a God of power and possibility. God is a God of strength and salvation. That nothing is impossible for God. And God will do anything to remind God, God's people of how much God loves them. So why is it important to remember? Well, when we remember as God's people, the power of the past comes into the present and shapes the future. Let me say that again, because it's important. When we remember, the power of the past comes into the present and helps shape the future. So when we remember the story of the Red Sea, we remember what happened back then was that God defeated the powers of evil. It helps give us faith today that God is at work trying to fight against the evil powers that threaten us even today. Well, this week I got an email back from a woman from a church that I used to serve in Ohio. Chris is my age. Our children grew up together. And I was sad to learn that she is battling ovarian cancer and she's going through chemotherapy. And despite this, I was so surprised at how upbeat and positive and hopeful her message was to me. In fact, she said this, I am surrounded by prayers, and I know that I am in God's good hands. How could she say that? What gives her such faith? I think it's because she's been in the church her whole life, and she's heard these stories of faith. No doubt she has heard the story of the Red Sea, the story in which God saved God's people. And so this message has been sealed into her heart and her mind, and so that even in the midst of her trauma, she knows that in God, she can trust. So Moses and Miriam called the people then, and they call us today to remember the story of the Red Sea, the story of God using God's power to defeat the evil and to let God's people go free. And so when we remember the story, the power of the past comes into the present and helps shape our future, reminding us that no matter what the future holds, God is a God of power and possibility. God is a God of strength and salvation. Nothing is impossible for God. And there's nothing God won't do to show the depths of God's love for us. Well, I still have that scar on my chin from that traumatic experience when I was four years old. You can't see it, but I know it's there. I can feel it. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad of that because it reminds me. It reminds me of my mother's love and care. And it also reminds me that life happens. And sometimes it hurts. <laughs> and that even in the midst of our trauma, especially then, that in God we can trust. So, but sometimes that's so hard to remember, isn't it? Especially when life is hard and painful. So how can you remember that? Maybe you have a scar. <laughs> or maybe a cross that you wear. Or maybe a prayer, prayer bracelet that you've made. Maybe a picture that you hang on your wall at home. 
or maybe a piece of a poem or a psalm that's important to you that you've hung up on your mirror or on your refrigerator or maybe tucked in your Bible. Or maybe there's a song, a hymn, that's important to you that you sing in your heart over and over again. Or how about a story? (laughs) As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back And there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. When we remember this story, the power of the past comes into the present and help shape our future so that no matter what the future holds, we know that there is nothing God won't do to show the depths of God's love for you. So friends, remember, in God, we can trust. Thanks be to God. Amen.
when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then shall I bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen and amen. Thanks, Tim. It's powerful. Powerful reminder that our God is a great God. And to God, we can come just as we are, with heavy hearts, with happy hearts, with whatever heart you find yourself having today. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. 